Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. We're back to Radio V on the green carpet. Oh, it's going to be a great show today. I've got extraordinary filmmaker Holly Mosier, producer, and her film maker. You are a filmmaker, right? John Wellington Ennis and Brad Friedman. Brad, what, what show do you have? Uh, I'm, I have bradblog.com, The Green News Report, and a show on Pacifica Radio. Brad That's Cast. a lot of the, shows. The that. Bradcast. Yeah, it is a lot of shows. <laughs> Got to keep busy. So, so let's get right into like the show and th- and this week's episode. So, so what's the movie you guys made? It's called Pay to Play. Yeah, we started by following this scandal in Ohio called CoinGate, where fifty million dollars of the workers' comp money of people in Ohio was sifted off and invested into rare coins, Beanie Babies, and LeBron James jerseys. Hold on, hold on, slow down, slow down, slow down, <laughs> hold on, hold on. So, so I digest this. So you're saying they took these coins, rare coins, and who made these rare coins? Well, it was just an investment fund, and John Ennis, the director, can explain better. But that was where we, we jumped off when we heard about this crazy scandal in Ohio, and John went to Ohio to learn more. And seven years later, we finally have this film. <laughs> seven years. That's not bad. That's not bad. That's not bad. So how did you find out about this? Well, first of all, what was it? Like, did you get an email? Did you get a phone call? You know, it was funny. My dad actually uh, got brought in from out of state. I grew up in Chicago. My dad got brought in to help audit this Bureau of Workers' Compensation scandal because it was exploding, and they realized that they couldn't trust anybody in Ohio anymore. It was that, like, essentially corrupt. And this is right after the 2004 elections where they had a very uh, dubious outcome due to what significant <laughs> <laughs> dubious outcome. Oral uh, <laughs> difficulties I hadn't with heard. long lines. It's well, there's a movie about that. Oh. So. Isn't Ohio the swing state? Isn't the swing the state's state? really, and it's not only that, it's like this bellwether. It's like this litmus test. It's this crazy forecast for how American culture is going. So between this scandal and between these crazy elections and between the fact that this is Hold on, is hold on. I got, I'm a, sorry. I don't mean to cut you off, John. I just want to be clear about something. Was it a, was it, was it a public? Was this publicized as a scandal? Yeah, or? this was so was exhausted. This was the, one of those uh, coin gate, as it was called. Why wouldn't you call it coin gate? Okay. Uh, it just kept getting worse and worse and worse that, like, the laughable heights of it became something where I thought, I thought for the first time I could start to quantify the lengths of corruption in a lighthearted, funny way that people could start to appreciate what goes into it. So who broke the, who broke the story? How did the story come out? The story was broken by the Toledo Blade, who we interviewed at the beginning of the film. Okay. And uh, they certainly won awards for that and a lot of notice. And uh, it really started to kick off this larger lesson for me that, you know, that was essentially this one guy who was the biggest political fundraiser in all of Ohio, Republican. And this state money ended We're up being not getting political here. Republican, I don't care about it. No, <laughs> conviction Good from luck. 2006. <laughs> so, uh, but so he uh, hit the fact that he's laundering all this money into the Bush campaign became uh, something that was uh, both a federal and state uh, crimes that he ended up and he's still serving for. And so, uh, because of that, that started to send me down the road of the problems of putting money into government, you know, when it comes back out in the form of, you know, kick out, you know, payouts to uh, con- okay, contributors. Okay, so, so you got a scandal, this little political cor- corruption. What's the movie about? What's Pay to Well, play it's about? really about my, uh, my journey then from that point going from uh, following outsider candidates in Ohio and what they go when they're running up against to – finding out that the idea of monopoly that we all grew up with ends up being this toxic influence that somehow has uh, manifested itself in all these other forms and finding out the secret behind monopoly becomes one of the themes in this movie and then how that represents the corporate overflow. And then after Citizens United, really, you realize that all bets are off when corporate takeovers uh, happening on our democracy. And so once you start to so uh, look at all these different issues, that's how we weave it through my journey over these years. So if you're going to break it down to you know Act One, Act Two, Act Three, Act One is 2006 in Ohio, Act Two is 2010, and then Act Three is 2011, which is this crazy year of people power, which goes from everything from U.S. Uncut 
and the Arab Spring to occupy Wall Street, and of course the uh, the protests around the Koch, uh, Koch brothers and Allen. And, and and with CoinGate though, it, it was a it was a guy putting money into the political system into the Republicans. The Republicans get elected, then they put him in charge, right, of all of this state money, millions and millions of dollars, which you're supposed to invest safely and conservatively. And he was putting it into like his favorite but, but uh, I wanna, ostensibly but, and that's the thing he wasn't even doing that he was just it was just money laundering but I want to okay. come back to him because you know my bar mitzvah theme is was monopoly I mm -hmm. love monopoly so I want to get to like like how did monopoly show up for you like you know like where did that theme come in from in your and film? be careful John you may ruin his bar mitzvah with this <laughs> oh, well, I've, seen, know, I've seen the, I've seen I've seen I've seen part of his movie okay. and I still love okay. I still love monopoly you right. know what I mean yeah and, and you know what's interesting is that you know it's the film starts off with me on the boardwalk showing the rules to people of the game of monopoly and pretty much everyone is a little surprised to read that it says the goal of the game is to drive everyone else into bankruptcy I mean that's what it says and there, they, I don't have to make the point. Everyone is quick to point out this is what's happening today all around us. And so the idea from that point is, you know, what about it has been so uh, subjugated? And, and the reality is, is that this was a folk game that started out, you know, over 100 years ago uh, that was designed to teach people uh, about uh, the land. It was called the Landlord's Game. And it was about the teachings of Henry George, who so was an economist, a Quaker economist. A are we going on commercial? Wow, that's nuts. <laughs> ah! Well, we're going to come back. We're going to talk about the 28th Amendment. We're going to talk about um, how you guys came up with the name Pay to Play, right? And, um, and we're going we're gonna to cut to commercial. Cool. Thank you. And I play the game. We are live. This is happening now. That's the Lonely Wild, and they're in studio. And we are here with... Hey, hello. Hey! Oh, we got a, a, a maximum capacity. I don't know if there's a fire hazard going on right now. <laughs> yeah, joined by the West Coast Saloon Young. Yeah. Alex Johnson. Oh my God. I just want to hear you sing all night. This voice. That's so nice. Well, thank you. Yeah, new regime. It's called Exhibit A. It's the latest release. The oh, magic yeah. of radio. <laughs> That's crazy. I'm Zoe Williams. And I'm Dr. Mark Goulston. I'm Jeff Brown. And we make up the Zoe What Morning Show. You can find us here on TRadioV.com every Monday at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. I make you think. He makes you laugh. And if I get a chance, I'll help you change. Or make you cry with his attempts at humor. Radio in TV. Can you relate? We'll make it happen. Look at Jeff. What you doing? Were you mumbling to yourself? <laughs> hey, back there mumbling. To them. To them. Hey, guys. I'm Pilar Lastra. And I'm Joey Heim. Be sure that you catch our new show, Sports Lust. Every Wednesday at 11 a.m. right here on T Radio V. What are we going to talk about? This is where you talk about why it's called Sports Lust. Because well, look at everybody us. who loves sports, sports Lust. is going to be tuning in to watch you talk sports. Yeah. Topless. Well, I think topless. I don't mind doing that. Will you That's do it? Sports lust every Wednesday, right? At 11 a.m. T Radio V, v is radio made in for TV. TV. Just no. Just yeah. come on, work with me. There we go. <laughs> TV radio in TV. <laughs> Radio in TV. Radio in TV. Live, here we are in T Radio V. I think that had been the quickest commercial we've done on the green carpet, but it's all good. So let's just come back. So tell me a little bit about the 28th Amendment and why is that important? Yeah, so along with the film, when we, we offer six solutions in the film, but uh, beyond that with our partners, we're trying to really boost the movement. And so if you go to our website, pay the number two play.nationbuilder.com, you can go to our solutions page and look at what we're about. 
And to boost that, we created a 28th Amendment National Road Show. We've already had four stops. We went to Berkeley, UCLA, Seattle, and Portland, where we're trying to push that message that corporations are not people, they should not be given rights of people, and that money is not speech, because that's really where things have gotten off track. And in Seattle, we had a great outcome with somebody in the audience offering up a $50,000 challenge grant to the state of Washington wow. for their petition drive. So we just came off of that in the last two weeks, had those four stops, and then in the fall, we want to come back with 20 more cities. So wow. we're fundraising now for those 20 city But, but what is the 28th Amendment, for those that don't know? Well, the 28th Amendment is an answer to the problems we're facing with, uh, since Citizens United was uh, handed down by the Supreme Court unilaterally, which said, which affirmed that corporations uh, should be considered people under our Constitution and that uh, money is the equivalent of speech. Uh, and so what this uh, amendment does is affirm that money is not speech and that corporations are not people under our Constitution, so that at that point we can pass laws and strike down uh, existing opportunities that seem to give every uh, every uh, deference to the uh, top one point point oh oh one percent and and, yeah. and to be clear we don't yet have a 28th amendment just in case there's any right. confusion yeah, yeah. this yeah. is yeah. a move this is how it starts for a 28th amendment okay, to, to get money right. the hell okay. out of politics and get corporations yeah. out of politics and, and so forth yeah. and to bring that up i brought some books we have oh, the look. six amendments which is by former justice john paul stevens uh, yeah. he actually has Ending gerrymandering and public finance, you know, campaign reform, and then. I mean, um, campaign reform—it's just so out of hand, right? I mean, like, is it is it even manageable now? I mean, like. This is where it starts. Yeah, thanks to our constitution, we have this Article Five thing, which we learned about at the uh, constitutional. Uh, it, it allows a constitutional convention right. for very narrow uh, calls between thirty-some states that the uh, Congress has to actually allow to happen. And, it, so it, and then that would be a way to change the actual Constitution versus the it, yeah. uh, uh, campaign finance reform laws, which have been just destroyed, decimated by the Supreme Court. They don't, uh, they don't matter anymore. Citizens United, uh, as you said, affirms that corporations are people and money is speech somehow. And then we recently had the McCutcheon decision at the Supreme Court because Citizens United wasn't bad enough the McCutcheon decision says now uh, people can give as essentially give as much money as they want to as many candidates as they want. This Supreme Court has gone off a cliff and we are all paying the price, which is what uh, pay to play is about how bad I this has become and how much money rules are. Uh, I was going to say, I'm like, if you're now. rich, it's great. Just <laughs> go out and just. Buy your, buy yeah. your, buy your. But uh, even then, rich people shouldn't have to waste their money on that stuff, you know. And it's almost unfair to so many other businesses when you look at it, who are like, "Well, I didn't want to have to join Alec, but all these other tech companies are, so now I have to because they're going to write the laws of the future." See, John's looking out for the rich people in this movie. <laughs> it's really about. It's not so much about the top, you know, point oh whatever percent. It's about the people who use the money to abuse the democratic process, so, as it always has been. So, and so, because it, that's ultimately that's the highest return on investment is when you get to rewrite all the laws. And so that's what pay to play is really about, is about that huge amount of money that comes back to you for that little bit of money you put in I comparatively. See. I see. Now, who came up with the name Pay to Play? Well, that was Holly, because oh. we were like an hour. <laughs> we had this like epic film around like early 2008. We made Free for All, which is about me going through Ohio investigating elections. And, and it's hilarious, by the way. Thank you you won't much. say it, but it's a hilarious uh, film, Free for All. Yeah, and voter suppression. Yeah. Well, it's so dark you had to. And so it is. at some point we had this two and a half hour movie that said everything I'd ever want to say about politics. And then we realized it's too long. And Holly was like, well, cut that in half. <laughs> Election fraud. Voter suppression, that'll be free for all. Pay to play will be about campaign finance reform. And then campaign finance reform became a huge issue because that was like two years before Citizens United even happened. Yeah. Got it. So, so what, what, are the, what are the Powell memos? What are the Powell memos? Well, one thing that we talk about in the film is the Lewis Powell memo, which happened in 1971. And that was actually a reaction. This is on the green carpet, so let's bring in the green issues. That was a reaction to the success of Earth Day. All in the early 70s, late 60s, there was the huge environmental movement and things were happening. The people power was pushing the agenda and environmental re regulations were happening across the board and people were finally being protected, the air, the water, everything. But of course, Lewis Powell, who had worked um, for Philip Morris and was a head there, and uh, 
he wrote this secret memo be before he became a Supreme Court justice. They did not ask him about this and what his agenda was, but he had an extreme corporate agenda. And we've seen the repercussions of that in the past 40 years now. So the Chamber of Commerce took this blueprint, which was, first of all, you have to you know, make your own infrastructure to support your beliefs. That includes uh, you know, right-wing business-friendly outlets. That includes educational uh, departments that will uh, you know, provide research for uh, you know, policy-making institutions that then po uh, you know, politicians, elected leaders can cite as evidence of their opinion. Cause Let's face it, we're not that popular when we're trying to sell this. And so this is about creating this larger mythology that you see very much alive uh, today. And so when we reach that breaking point, you start to realize that, you know, we have to sort of build in the same way, you know, to be able to support other people's views and allow uh, democracy and activists who are keen to this stuff to be able to get their message out there to other people. So are you saying we're not in a democracy? Well, I'd love to hear Brad's take on that one, <laughs> you know, speaking of people. Well, yeah, because I cover, uh, and I think that's how I, I met John in uh, Free For All. I haven't seen the latest cut of Pay to Play, so I don't even know if I'm still in the movie anymore. Yeah, yeah, he's but, in it a lot, actually. Uh, actually, he's I? in the most, like, different setups, if you count it. If you watch it closely <laughs> enough, it'll count. Am I funny? Uh, yeah, you've got a couple oh, okay. good things. I've got a couple. Uh, <laughs> what was the question? Oh, democracy. Yeah. Uh, do we have democracy anymore? Well, uh, a recent study came out uh, suggesting that we are no longer a democracy. We are, in fact, an oligarchy because we've got the rich people who have access that you and I, uh, presuming the rest of you are as poor as I, uh, access that we will never have and that the entire system now uh, hinges on uh, what the rich people want. And all of that has been made easier with Citizens United, with McCutcheon, uh, all of which you know follows the roadmap laid out by those uh, Powell memos. And since this is a, a green show, and I uh, do a, a green news report a radio show with my uh, partner, uh, I wanted to just tie these uh, ideas yeah, together. Yeah, if what I could. does this mean? Tell me. Well, uh, w one of the things that they recently had an all-night uh, climate action thing in the U.S. Senate because Republicans will no longer pay attention to climate issues, so they decided we're going to do it, and we're just going to talk about the climate and, and the crisis we're facing right now all night long. And Senator Whitehouse actually tied together Citizens United to what we are now seeing uh, when it comes to climate, when it comes to climate denial, uh, on the mostly on the Republican side. And he basically said that before 2010, and you may remember in the 2008 election, John McCain, Sarah Palin, they were all talking about environmental issues. They were all talking about a cap and trade program. Yeah, they were. This was not uh, this a crazy was, no. uh, idea for Republicans. They were on board. Then everything changed. What and changed? White House pointed out as of 2010, we had Citizens United, which gave unprecedented control to people like the Koch brothers, these oil magnates, fossil fuel magnates, you know, climate change deniers. And if you did not kowtow to their position, you ain't going to get there. Not only are you not going to get their money, they're going to put millions into your primary challengers campaign and they will destroy you. So after 2010, all of a sudden, Republicans who used to be environmentalists, you know, they're all denialists. They don't believe in the science, you know, bringing us up to this weekend when Marco Rubio who pretends to be running for president uh, yeah. this year, yeah. uh, all of a sudden, he's like, uh, I don't believe the science, I don't believe climate change is happening, I don't believe man could possibly uh, uh, change the uh, the climate with a release of carbon. Three years ago, or uh, seven years ago, when he was in 2007, before he became a senator, he was talking about the economic opportunities that climate change would bring to bring in new energy, it would be great for Florida, a lot of investment. Um, now, it's like, that never happened, Please don't look at that videotape from 2007. Climate change doesn't exist. Please give me more money, Koch brothers. And that's all because of Citizens United uh, that he talks about in this film. Yeah, it sounds like, uh, well, it's, it's like the status quo. They don't want to change. They want to just con control. They want to control their... their but you can tie it directly to that moment, directly mm -hmm. to the moment where they said, the people no longer matter. It's the corporations that matter. They have the big money. And remember, the oil well, companies are well, the most what? profitable companies in the world I have a saying, and I always world, say, don't love your, I have a yeah. saying, I always say, don't yeah. love your corporation. They don't love back. 
Mm-hmm. Well, they're sociopathic. <laughs> yeah, they That's have true. no feelings. <laughs> and they have nothing, and yet we treat them as if they're human beings and if they're and, people. And they're not. Literally, and not. Well, I yeah. think the Supreme Court might rule that they even have religious uh, rights right. under yes. the Hobby Lobby as well. Yeah. This is true. This is actually happening. I wish it was I as funny it's as like, it sounds. I, I think it's ludicrous <laughs> when I think about it. It's like, come on. It's I mean, absurd. It's it's absurd. Now I think we're yeah. gonna I think we're gonna go. And we're gonna cut to commercial now. But we're gonna come back. We're on T Radio V Live. Live on the green carpet with Greg Reitman. We'll be back. We gonna hey everybody, Sean Astin here. You may know me from Goonies, Rudy, The Lord of the Rings, but actually my calling is as a political radio show host. So I am proud to announce that I'm bringing my show, Vox Populi Radio, right here to T-Radio V. Radio in TV, Thursdays, 12 to 2, live. Did I say that it's live? Live. Call in, tweet in, check in. It's going to be your show. Hi, I'm Rob Hubel from Welcome to the Jungle. You're watching T-Radio V, aren't you? Radio on TV. Terrible idea. In TV. You shut up. <laughs> Use that one. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kristen Renton from Sons of Anarchy. Hi, I'm Grant Reynolds. Hey, I'm Katie Cleary of World Animal News. Hi, I'm Ricky Rackman reminding you to su- support the Relay for Life of Madison County May 31st. Donate or participate. The American Cancer Society Relay for Life movement symbolizes hope, hope and our shared goal to end a disease that threatens the lives of so many people we love. I mean, I'll bet you know somebody that was affected with cancer. Donate or participate. Thank you. Let's get digital. Wednesday, 6 p.m. on T Radio V L A. Crazy Bone would never do this. <laughs> I guess it- <laughs> Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. I grew up playing Monopoly. Everyone did. It's the best selling board game in America. Did you guys play Monopoly growing up? Yes, I did. I still do play it. You still play Monopoly? <laughs> I still play Monopoly. It brought my brothers and sisters together. Now I'm about to cry again. So, what did Monopoly teach us? Becoming rich, collecting rent. Making all the money and winning. Take everybody's money. To take, to take down people. I remember a friend of mine that would get so frustrated with the game that he would like, just one of those board flippers, would get so mad and frustrated that I was beating him that he would just f- flip the board. I have the rules of the game. The last player left in the game wins. Okay. Because everybody else has Goes to be declared bankrupt. bankrupt. Yeah. When you play Monopoly, in the end you realize that you are violating all sorts of anti-Monopoly laws. The Interstate Commerce Act, the Sherman Antitrust Act, the Clayton Antitrust Act. It's a felony crime is what it really teaches. That's that normal business like practice That's today. reality today. <laughs> Like the big companies are taking over and the small companies are going bankrupt. This game has become realistic for this century. It's true life. When we played it, it was not. We learned that you can get out of jail if you hold the right cards. We learned business practices that are not legal in real life. If anything, perhaps we learned a monopoly mindset. That streets, utilities, and homes can be bought and sold and that one person owning all of them was somehow good for everybody. Monopoly is definitely, it's, it's America. In politics, big money rules. And the grown-up game of Monopoly is pay to play. Cool, nice. T-Radio V, what a cool trailer. You must be so excited, seven years. I just wanna go back real quick. I wanna know for those that don't know what Citizens United is, 
tell me, what is Citizens United? We assume that we, everybody knows what that is, and I don't want to assume anything. So yeah, for that's those, why we make the movie. Yeah, so weird, for those you know? that are uneducated, let's educate them now. What is it? Go, Brad. Oh, me? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, uh, I have Brad Friedman right here. <laughs> well, Citizens United uh, was a so-called advocacy group, this right-wing advocacy group. And, uh, and by the way, they put millions of dollars into Clar getting Clarence Thomas approved by the Senate to become a, uh, a justice on the Supreme Court. Uh, years later, a decade or so later, I guess, or maybe 20 years later, uh, they have a film beating up on Hillary Clinton right before the 2008 election. Uh, and, and the question was, can you put this film on uh, TV? Does it violate the equal time l l rules that we used to have? Okay. Um, and essentially, it goes to the Supreme Court, and they say, yeah, you know what? We don't have those rules anymore. You can do whatever you want. You can put as much money. Corporations can put as much money as they want uh, because it's free speech. So they can put millions of dollars into campaigns. Got it. You can forget about equal time. And it, it affirmed once again that the Supreme Court believes that corporations are people. And since they're people, they have the same free speech rights that anyone else has. And since uh, m money, they believe, is free speech, corporations can now spend as much as they want on elections in pretty much any way they want and that's destroyed our got it system. so that's that's the short version did i get it right john <laughs> yeah well, that kind well, yeah, of is the short yeah. version yeah, yeah, sorry yeah. to say but it's all these different like you know uh you know morphings of terms like corporation which is really just a bunch of different people coming together in a contract which is a legal fiction so then to give those people additional powers on top of that starts to contort the very implication of yeah. you know what it is to participate in this <coughs> democracy I got it. I got it. No, that's great. For those that didn't know, I just want to make sure now they know. And so let's go back. You had some great themes in your movie. You had like chance, and you really used those. So talk to me about it. What 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 were they? Like waterworks? I think I saw. How did that come out? Like, oh yeah. So you know, the way that we really navigate through this movie, it seems like it's about a lot of different things, but it really is about this board game that we take you through, and it's about this updated version of Monopoly called Pay to Play, and it's about what it would take to really, you know, it's defining this pay to play system, and so it's everything from union busting to, uh, you know, what it costs of running for campaigns, all these different obstacles to actually getting involved in, uh, for ordinary people, outsiders to become involved, so, uh, you know, these are images from uh, at, you know I at the loved, end of I our movie. These. I loved your images, by the oh, way. Oh, that's great! When I got them and I started going through them, I thought they were great. I so this is uh, sort of showing at the end of the movie what all, all the different lessons and topics we've learned, and we uh, take over an intersection in downtown LA during the May Day parade to uh, to sort of show and. Uh, combined with an Occupy march going on at the same time to bring in all of these uh, different themes together um, so that a lot of these people might know about, say, Citizens United at that point, but they won't know about the Powell Memo, per se. And so uh, these are, uh, you know, what those are are some of the people who were in the film, Robert Reich, John Nichols, and quotes from theirs as well, because we use street art to try to get these images and uh, show the importance that are out to people. Yeah, I loved your street art, by the way. I, so let's just, I got a bunch of stuff on the table. You brought it, I think, a bunch of stickers, but this one, isn't this like on the dollar bill? Like, what are you doing here? <laughs> yeah, well, government <laughs> art is very inspired, but uh, yeah, we made, uh, this little sticker says, uh, politics is a pyramid scheme, because ultimately, you're, you know, that's where the money in politics goes, is to the top of the pyramid. Now, it, it may or may not be illegal to uh, reprint this, but I, I just want to say that uh, John Ennis doesn't really give a damn about what's legal. Wait, as what you will do you mean? Find Wait, out, time out, time out. It's illegal as, to print this? Well, uh, well, yeah. He's I mean, talking about co-opting. He's talking about this? the oh, fair use co-opting. It's like the dollar bill. I think it's yes. great. Oh, well, yes. <laughs> it's also illegal to reprint dollar bills, now in you're case right. you're wondering. Right. But uh, the point was, and I don't want to give too much of the movie away, but uh, John doesn't give a damn about now, the now law, Holly, as you find well, out. Hold on, hold on. Holly's, yeah, yeah. Holly's got while, some dollar bills. While what we're talking not about illegal the, to deface money. Yeah. That is while, illegal, No, right? while we're talking about no, that, one of our not? partners is Stamp Stampede, and they yeah. have these fun stamps that say not to be used for bribing politicians. <laughs> that you can... Stamp on your money. Oh, you got to do. You got to see this. What this is, is great. As, as do that again, Holly. Yeah, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. great. I Check this out. 
So you can't do it on the serial number. That would be that's illegal. The only oh, that's illegal. That this is would fascinating. be illegal. You but figured out which part of the money you can and can't deface? So yeah. there you go. And this is Ben and Jerry's. Ben Cohen. This is his stamp stampede. So he looked up all the legalities. What does it say? And sure. this says not to be used for bribing politicians. Oh, I see. Oh, this okay, is fascinating. <laughs> so hold on. Hold on. I want to take a step back for a second. Nice. So you're telling me on this dollar bill, Brad, would you take the yeah. bill so they can see yeah, it. Yeah, all right. Check this bell. Right. You're telling me that it is illegal to actually stamp on the serial, the number. serial number. And what happens if you do? Turn it around, Brad. Brad, the, the top part. part. This part right here. This part? Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Serial the serial number. number. Yeah. So where it says, so you're telling me that if I stamp it on a serial number, what happens to me? I can go to jail? I, I don't know what happens then because I'm not trying that. The I'm NSA knows everything. Let's not get her coward. coward. Wow. Coward. So that's like a federal offense. They can know. actually. Let's do it. I don't, I don't know. Let's do it. Stamp it. No, Come on, no, man. no. It's a live well, show. I, I just want to say because, uh, jo I, can, can I reveal this about y your experience with the, the law in the making of this film? What, were you arrested? Well, there's a lot of uh, street art uh, activity that goes on in the film. And so, you know, ultimately you're going to see my having documented uh, individuals partaking in activities a lot which of renegades. may be uh, I, I considered renegades, illegal right? under yeah. certain city penal codes. <laughs> yes. yeah. So what is it? You know, it's interesting. I've seen both. So let's just talk about the Alec part of the film. Where did the Alec come from? Well, that's what's kind of weird is that the first uh, street artist that we started with was this guy, Alec Monopoly. And uh, we already had this Monopoly theme. Street art always struck me as the last resort to try to get a message out. I was like, well, let me follow this guy. Okay. And then, you know, maybe a year or two after it, I start getting, you know, these emails about this group called ALEC, American Legislative Exchange Council. This is a completely different ALEC. But they have their own kind of monopoly because the, what this is was kind of like the worst case scenario, but uh, in a neat little organization with uh, field trips involved. So this is uh, brings uh, legislators together, state and federal, to with uh, lobbyists, essentially representative of companies, um, to help these people write legislation curtailed to certain companies' uh, very specific interests in any almost any field. In and secret. then this is like a template, like a Microsoft Word document, where you just type in a different like state, and then suddenly all your private, all your uh, public parks and public uh, golf courses in your city are suddenly privatized, and you don't know how that happened. And uh, a lot of times, these lawmakers didn't even read the either. So, you know, these things come out over the course of our film because once people start to find out uh, that this group exists, uh, a very small protest shows up at their annual meeting. At this protest, somebody from ALEC is, attends it outside their building, hears it, has a change of heart, then goes about leaking 800 pieces of model legislation proving that ALEC's been doing this this whole time, which nobody really took seriously and then from there so many more people jumped on and realized that all these disparate groups just absolutely had stuff uh, in common and, and so they're a non love, won't you love documentary filmmakers I feel like documentaries bring truth right it's like you're just bringing truth to the world well, yeah, it's it's just somebody's got to yeah. you, you know in the old days we used to call this the news <laughs> <laughs> you know and they would really they would put this on the news uh, every night now we don't have it now it falls to documentary filmmakers yeah. to explain to the American people what is going on. I mean, I, w with what so is do you going have a, do you have a list of like all like like I mean, is there like a roster? Got like now we have good corporations versus bad corporations. I mean, well, that's one of the things that's amazing I mean, is that you know the members of Alec flee once uh, once their uh, participation was sunshine revealed. like cockroaches. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Light and, <laughs> and they scatter. One of the it's major yeah. cockroaches are coming. <laughs> One of the major yeah. issues uh, that had uh, galvanized people around this, uh, you know, Alec was realizing that laws, not just like the voter ID, but also like the stand your ground laws uh, were, were Alec bills. And so after the Trayvon Martin shooting and where there's this question of like, so wait, is it still technically illegal to shoot a black teenager if we're scared? So once right. that becomes a legal question that no court can answer, then people are like, "Wait, where did this law come These from?" These are laws. So that made yeah. uh, uh, you know uh, Alex this sponsors just irritates really irritates me. Barrel, by the way, doesn't it just know, irritate barrel. you when you hear about this? This is just it's crazy. First of all, I just want to yeah, I just want to say, I, I say one thing, John. I <laughs> have so much respect for you. You have dedicated seven years of your life, you and Holly, to to bring this truth forward. I think it's awesome. Um, I think that, like, you know, when people 
take to heart like we, we always say well we don't care about politics you know because it's, cor it's corrupt but the fact that you're putting heart and common sense into the political system is i just want to commend you both oh, i think it's just cheers. awesome yeah thank I mean, you and and i think that when we think about like a film pay to play god everyone should go see this movie i mean i feel like the more we're enlightened the more we're educated the more we're going to make a difference and the interesting thing is it's our generation that's going to do it you that's know true I mean? that's yeah. true and, and and i was saying that the other day i said you know i think the thing that we have in our generation is that we have this apathy like nobody wants to step up and be a young politician right we don't yeah. see that they're all the great guys wearing suits on the hill, I, I don't understand why. Right. Why that is? Like, do you, would you ever, would you ever consider being a politician? Well, that's the thing, and that's and you know what you're talking about is really the thing in this movie. I wanted to show so many other people who are doing this because it's an inspiration to me. He like, dodged. Right. He dodged the question about the politician. I know. I know. We're gonna, we're well, gonna come back. We're gonna, go on, we're gonna go on. We're gonna come back. We're gonna come back. <laughs> we're gonna come back. This is T Radio V. This is Greg Wright when we're live on the green carpet. Can't wait to come back. Hi, I'm Moby, and you're watching T Radio V. You ready? That's horrible. Mm, do that over again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got it. Talk about your show. Ready? Go? Yes? No? Prompt me? Cool. Hi, I'm Greg Reitman. We're here on the green carpet every Tuesday at 2 p.m. here on T Radio V. On the green carpet each week is where art, music, fashion, and entertainment come together with the environment to make a difference in the world. Each week, a celebrity, a musician, an artist, or someone working in the entertainment industry will talk about what they're doing to change the world every Tuesday at 2 p.m. here on T-Radio V, radio and TV. I got it, right? Yeah. Great. T-Radio V. What did you play opposite Andy Eric? Do you remember? Uh, Andy and I worked as uh, two employees at a network. Okay. Oh, you're and forgetting the other I, thing. I played, I, played, I played a news anchor and he played a reporter. Okay, but the other thing you did, the thing you did on the Andy Dick show, who did you play to Andy? Oh, uh, is, is that who played my sister? You played his wife, Denise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you played his wife. Yeah. So what's wrong with that, Alexa? Yeah. Nothing's wrong with it. He's got it's a great just, range as an actor. It, you know? Yeah, it just was funny. Encounters with Eric and Eliza Roberts, Wednesdays from 2 to 4 p.m. on T Radio V. Yo, what's up? This is your boy Kyle Mass, and you're checking out T Radio V. T Radio V. T Radio V. Hello, T Radio V. Love you guys. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. T Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. We're back on T Radio V. This is Greg Wright, and we're on the green carpet with Holly Mosier, John Wellington Ennis, and it's so Brad cool that Friedman. we can do this paintless because it's so hot in LA today. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, guys, it is hot. Super cool. I want to get right into it because how can we get involved? What's the action? Do you have a Kickstarter? Do you have an Indigo? What, what, what can we do? Well, I'm glad you asked because we're in the middle of our Kickstarter campaign right now. And if you go to Kickstarter and look up... What's the pay, URL? Um, pay, is it pay to play? Just look up pay to play. We also did the hashtag get money out, so it should come up there. Get money out. Get money out okay. is our hashtag. You're pay to play dot TV, right? Yeah, our website is pay to play pay dot TV. Pay to play. And then there's a Kickstarter link there that will take you right there. So that's good. I'm going to giveaways if you don't. We have some awesome rewards. We've got <laughs> t-shirts. We've got sticker packs. Oh, I like t-shirts. We've got books. We've got uh, um, Shepard Ferry, who did the Obama Hope poster, yep. did our poster for the film. Wow. That's so yeah, really that cool. That is, it's we only really have, cool. we have 900 that we're giving away. So it's an exclusive Shepard Ferry artwork you know on the kickstarter hey, campaign we, we cross 
And um, is that us? No, no, this is the old oh, this one. is the old one. That's the old one. Okay. We did one, one a few years ago. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, it's been a long awesome. time. And you mentioned a bunch of books. What kind <laughs> of books? What, what do you? Well, what, what, we have Dollarocracy by John Nichols, which is on this topic. Okay. Really great information. He's amazing. If you ever get a chance to see him live, yeah. you know, you can read him in the Nation. You can see him on MSNBC. But if you get so to see him live, well, let me ask you a question. When you look, for you get to see him in pay to play. I, I just yeah. I don't mean to come up. When you look for when you look for a politician, what do you look for? Like what? Like what resonates for you? Like you know what I mean? Like I'm still looking. I mean, so <laughs> I, I, really, I mean, they're all so unbelievably uh, lame and not courageous these days. Well, that's the that problem. They can't really afford to be, and you know, it attracts certain individuals, personality types who might be a little bit more egocentric, vanity-driven, that are rewarded by grandstanding and screwing up the government. Ted Cruz that are <laughs> maybe sociopathic and have a serious uh, you know drinking problems John Bain. Ja ah, so that you <laughs> right, right, let's go back so what's the action so what can we do Holly well we want people to host house party screenings okay uh, we're going to do our theatrical release in August okay do you have a date we have a date um, we don't have the date yet but we're going to do New York LA okay. We also want to do Ohio, where we did a lot of filming. Um, can and we get you guys to come back for yeah, August? Yeah, we'll come back. Yeah, that would be, be great. awesome. We'll do like I a, will like not. I will not come. Do you back. not come back for I a will post? Not. I'll uh, it. I won't come. <laughs> <laughs> so let me let me say this because in ten seconds, I know you're near the end of the hour here. No, no, uh, we got, we got time. All, we got time. All, all of the uh, ideas that we've talked about that you know sound quite complicated, and you know Supreme Court and Paul Memel and all of these uh, political things. Uh, I forgot Citizens United. Citizens United. Thank you <laughs> for remembering. Uh, all of those are in this movie, but it's really not a like a dull political documentary that you'd find on PBS. It's really funny. This guy is at the center of the whole film. He's hysterical, and, uh, I think, uh, but maybe that's just well, me. I would agree. And, I it's, saw it's him. A fun, yeah, yeah, you yeah, saw yeah, the I film. saw him. No, John's great. Yeah, John's it, got it's, it. It's a funny film. So it's got these complicated, difficult ideas, but put forward in a way that is, A, easy to understand, and B, really entertaining. So let's go back. So you, wanna, you, you want to give me more of that stamped money now. Yeah, yeah, give me oh, some yeah. more stamped money. <laughs> <laughs> you want people we to do want house, people house to do parties? house parties. And yeah, what does that because, mean? Like you know, it's very easy. People come together and invite their friends and they, you know, whoever. And really, and they, watch a movie. they watch the movie together and they talk about this. And, and why you can do they it at care. a library. You don't have to bring strangers over. You, you can, you can, yeah, do, it you can do it anywhere. You can do it at your school. Yeah. You know, it's actually wow. pretty uh, do you great see facilities. This film and people are like, oh, yeah, sure, for that cause. No do problem. Do you think this film it will play in educationally? Yes, I think this has a, also a good market at the universities because we also followed a young guy running for office and what it took. And so there's a great, um, you know, civic action, how people can be participate. And so it would be great for political science classes and, and it was good for law programs, what's happening legally. And what are we going to do with this money? So how much money are we looking to raise on Kickstarter? We are looking to raise $50,000. We're over 18000 now. Wow, 18000 in. That's 17, fabulous. Yeah, we've got 17 days to go. So I'm feeling very confident. And again, we have great rewards. So, like, go and do your shopping, the great T-shirts, and yeah, support yeah, the film. And the poster. Download. Get the po there's it's a the poster. Poster. It's a yeah. Well, there's oh, also a book of street like artists that we follow. Oh, yeah. So you didn't there's a whole book of uh, the, the street art. Yeah. I, um, I wrote a book about uh, all the street artists that I followed uh, with uh, interviews that I conducted okay. and uh, photos and, uh, you know, stills I took going out with them at night. And some of them are really big now. And so it's actually Now, did you valuable. actually, were you one of those renegades that were actually drawing at night? You John? know, there's so much footage, it's really hard to tell uh -huh. in the end uh -huh. who was putting up what on Remember where. I talked about police action earlier? I'm just saying. Just but I love, saying. Yeah, I love the journal he did because it really highlights Los Angeles street art after Banksy came to town and everybody was inspired to go out. Yeah. And so he really grabs this little era um, yeah, there's so many storylines going on during the course of the film, and you know it's amazing how much of the controversy from Wisconsin to Occupy Wall Street's being reflected on the streets in L.A. at the same time. What about Robert Wright? Is he going to come out and promote the film? That would be great. I don't He's know. He's in yet. the film, right? Yes. Yeah, we'll give him a, a mini if he wants. <laughs> we'll drive him around in a mini. And what's the, and what's the is that because he's so short? Is that what that's well, about? Well, when you see his movie, he talks about shot? his mini. Yeah, you have to oh, watch okay. like really into for it, all. It's you know? great. I see. And what's the W? Give me the URL. What's the WW? So ours is pay the number two play 
www.nationbuilder.com is our new website. We have pay2play.tv as well, but we're in the middle of swapping over to this yeah. Nation and Builder. It, Nation Builder is a cool platform for people who don't want to see about organizing on steroids. What do you hope that people, like, you know, it's just, we got, I know we have not much time left, but I really wonder, what do you hope, John and Holly, that people, what's the takeaway? What do you hope people get when they watch this film? Well, I hope that they see that this issue affects everything else. Like, I was really excited. Greenpeace and Sierra Club have gotten on board with a thing called the Democracy Initiative and the NAACP because just like, you know, it affects the stand your ground laws, it inf affects the environment, it, it affects education, it affects everything. So if you care about any other issue, unless you're the one trying to keep you know, deregulation in place. <laughs> Unless you're <laughs> and fight a for that. brother, yeah. yes. If you're not them, <laughs> then join <laughs> us. If because you're not one of two people. Yeah. If you're not them, join <laughs> us. And it's really, it's like 63 major donors. Like, something like that. Is that crazy? There's well, so I, few trying to fight all this regulation. I think at the end of the day, it's going to come down to, you know, people are, have kids, their families, they're gonna, they care about their water, they care about their air. And at the end of the day, they're going to wake up. I mean, that's that's my gut. You know what yeah. I mean? And, I mean, that's, and, that's and what I, I would hope people that, can take know, away then will is it that be too they can late. do something. That's the question. Will it be too late? They well, need to wake up now. R really. Uh, well, that's why they got to go see Pay to Play. That, I mean, okay. that'll be the wake up call to get them on the road. Smartly open. Why yep. they need to be why they need to be politically yep. active, you yep. know, and to Smarties really understand open. why politics matter. Because yeah. I think we're kind of like. We don't really care anymore. Yeah. Time for well, apathy you don't know is if you over. Can. That's the thing. It's yeah. now cool to be to care. Yeah, it's now <laughs> cool to care. Yeah. It's cool to care. All right, guys. I really, really think you're awesome. Thank you so much, Thank John, you. Brad, Holly, for coming on the show. We're on T Radio V. This is Greg Reitman on the green carpet every Tuesday at two. Keep it real. Thanks, guys. <laughs>